Hi, Gregory Wrightstone here, and welcome to episode five of the Climate Chronicles. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about drought, and my apologies for my friends in the UK and Australia and around the world. It'll be mainly United States focused because the subject of the report is just issued, dealt with particularly that issue. If you like what you see here, please check out additional videos, interviews, and uh, blog commentaries that are at inconvenientfacts.xyz. And again, the uh, subject of our, our episode today is drought and, and climate change. And what we're going to do is take a look here again at climate change and its possible effects on drought. Uh, what generated this was a recent report issued just last week uh, concerning what they called uh, an emerging North American mega drought in the southwest of the United States. They claimed that this drought was one of the worst in 1,200 years and that it was still ongoing as of the date of the publication, which was 2020. So we're going to take a look at that and see, is that really the case? And of course, the uh, worldwide media, particularly American media, since it was United States focused, ran with it uncritically. Climate change, U.S. mega drought already underway. Mega drought emerging might be the worst in 1,200 years and we're all going to die. Well, let's take a look at what the science, the facts, and the data have to say about this. Some of the information we will look at today was drawn from my book, Inconvenient Facts, which is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and others. According to the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, they keep great records of drought severity and the uh, area of drought in the United States. And if you look on the far right of this chart, as of the beginning of this year, there was only 0.48% of the United States was in what they consider to be extreme or severe drought. And Virtually none of the United States was in extreme doubt, drought. And again, this is this is good news, but quite a bit different uh, than what we've seen, what was reported. And again, uh, this is another NOAA uh, drought severity index map showing areas in drought. The green actually have too much precipitation, have excess moisture. Uh, the orange is in moderate drought. And if you look really closely, see if you can find the red dot where we have severe drought. That's right. East coast of the United States, the Delmarva Peninsula. And what's really, really, really interesting, re recall that this report indicated that this mega drought, worst in 1,200 years, was ongoing uh, as, the date of the, as of the date of the report. What do you see there in the southwest of the United States? Zero drought. Zero drought at all in, in, this, in this area. That they're claiming that this mega drought is still ongoing. Uh, we'll take a look at the EPA Palmer Drought Severity Index. Uh, this chart shows anything above the dashed line running through the center. is the, That's the boundary between wetter than average, which is to the above, and drier than average below. We see no long-term trend of drought at all from this Palmer Drought Severity Index. An impactful study looked at global drought. It was published in 2014, but it's still applicable today. Uh, they went back and looked at 30 years of data, and they noticed a significant downtrend in the area of drought globally for 30-year period. Again, quite a bit different than what's being portrayed in the media and in this last report. Uh, and again, we take another look at this NOAA uh, area is very wet versus very dry. I just accessed this two days ago. And what we see is probably no trend at all. But if anything, it's getting a little bit moister. And we'll talk about why that might be in a moment. Another really interesting study that I, I found uh, very, very impactful was a study that looked at the most severe and prolonged droughts of the 20th century. And we find... Uh, each one of those, it was in 20-year increments in the years 1940 to 1960. Actually, these terrible, terrible droughts peaked. Uh, there were eight of them around the world, uh, and they've been in significant decline ever since. Bear in mind that droughts have always been with us, and they always will be. The main, main thing to note here is they're not getting worse, and they appear to be decreasing in number. Another study here looked at uh, several, 2,000 years of data. Uh, and looked at droughts in the southwest of the United States. There were some really horrific droughts 
uh, in this part of the of northern hemisphere uh, in North America. Uh, some of these lasted as much as 200 years of drought. Uh, one of these uh, in the 1200s was thought to have led to the demise of the Anasazi people in uh, Arizona in the southwest. If you recall the cliff dwellers, they have they were pretty large civilization that just disappeared. Uh, the uh, there's not much known about them, nothing written down, and uh, the Navajo in that area gave them the name Anasazi uh, for ancient ones. Another impactful chart. We always were told of increasing death related to drought. Well, these are drought-related deaths going back to 1900. They, uh, they occur periodically, but uh, definitely in the 1930s was a terrible, terrible time for drought. And thank God we're, we're getting better. So hopefully we've looked at enough data to show that droughts are not increasing for sure, probably declining. And so the question is, why is that? Part of it is an increase in precipitation that's likely uh, due to warming oceans means more evaporation, more precipitation. So we've got a little bit more water coming down. Uh, a big component here is CO2 fertilization. Increased CO2 means that the plants don't need to transpire, that is breathe in and out. They're, they're breathing in and, and using carbon dioxide for, as the building block for the glucose in the plants and then expelling oxygen, and also along with that, uh, they're expelling moisture. Well, higher CO2 levels mean the transpiration rate is smaller, uh, the pores or stomata of the plants are smaller, and so they're not losing as much, uh, they're not losing as much uh, uh, moisture, and they don't require as much soil moisture, so there's more soil moisture left in the ground, and hence it's a, it's a dampening effect on droughts. And again, and actually they use the size of these pores uh, for ancient indications of CO2 levels. Uh, the end result of all this, lack of drought, increased CO2 fertilization is a, an impressive greening of the earth. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with this and I'll ask you this question. If they're lying to you about this, what else are they lying to you about?